Commuters want to get from home to work reliably every day. Kids are waiting after school. Kids don't like waiting. There's crosstown traffic to deal with. The HOV lanes are moving quickly. What if a car has one occupant? Should the driver risk a ticket or the wrath of the boss or kids? In more and more locations across America, there's another option. It's called a hot lane. Hot stands for high occupancy toll. And it means that drivers who do not have enough passengers to meet the established vehicle occupancy requirement would have an option to use the HOV lane by paying a toll. Carpools, van pools, motorcycles, and transit vehicles use the lane for free, while other drivers pay a fee based on how busy the lanes are. This fee changes based on the amount of traffic congestion in the lane. Variable pricing is used to manage the lanes and maintain free flow conditions, even during rush hours. What are the advantages of hot lanes? They help to provide reliable travel times to users willing to pay a toll when they need to use the HOV lanes. The hot lanes concept is one of the proven congestion management tools to manage and optimize operational performance of HOV facilities. As we start to hit the edge of what we can do as far as adding new capacity because of right-of-way considerations, environmental considerations, we have to look at these pricing strategies such as hot lane conversion um, as ways to use the existing capacity that we have in the uh, most logical manner and cost-effective manner. Our goal is to make sure that our transit customers and those folks who choose the carpool or van pool, that they receive the most benefit of the facility. So when we look at the hot lane side of that, what we do is we use a dynamically priced system that adjusts the pricing based on the level of traffic in the lanes to make sure that we don't have um, a lot of single occupants in the lanes and that the performance of the facility maintains at a high level. Reliable travel times with fewer delays is exactly what daily commuters and impatient school kids expect. Hot lanes deliver on this promise in many locations across the country. At the onset, when the San Diego region first built the facility, the usage, even as amongst HOV users, was very low. But what we found is as we started promoting Fast Track and we opened it as a hot lanes facility, a lot of the initial customers realized the benefits of a single occupant and kind of a light came on. They said, well, you know what, this is a great facility, and if I just get someone to ride with me, I can use it for free. For motorists and commuters in Seattle, Houston, and San Diego, hot lanes are a reality. Let's take a look at each project and see how commuters and motorists are benefiting. The SR-167 project in Seattle is the first hot lane in the state of Washington and was opened as a pilot demonstration effort. Its goal is to create a successful hot lane model that can be emulated elsewhere in the state. The project opened to the public in 2008. The Washington State Department of Transportation converted nine miles of HOV lanes to hot lanes on SR-167 between Renton and Auburn. The main purpose is getting the best utilization out of the lanes. We have underutilized HOV lanes and we have overutilized HOV lanes. Um, we have about 10 segments that are not meeting our performance standards right now in the Central Puget Sound area. Going to 3 plus from 2 plus, I say, is like uh, managing with a 2 by 4 from traffic operations. So, how can we use pricing? How can we use tolling? to get the best operations both out of an underutilized lane but also being able to deal with that question of what do you do with an overutilized lane. The I-10 widening project in Houston presented Texas Department of Transportation engineers with an opportunity to overhaul the existing corridor. What began as a single HOV lane, operated only in the peak direction, has been expanded to two full-time lanes in both directions. Specifically for the I-10 project, it was important to look at how we could move forward in 
deal with adding capacity and optimizing that capacity. So one of the things we looked at in the early planning stages was how to implement a managed lane program that would afford us that. And so going over the options, hot lanes was one of the options that proved to be a very manageable way for us to add capacity, manage the added capacity that was being put on the system, and uh, allow us some congestion management well into the future. San Diego's first implementation of hot lane technology is an eight-mile stretch of I-15. Once a fast-track transponder is placed on the windshield of a car or truck, use of the lanes is controlled by a dynamic fee structure. The public sentiment about hot lanes in San Diego County has changed quite a bit. Uh, initially, there was some concerns that would it be effective, would it work, and was it a program that was considered elitist. Uh, we've put those concerns to rest, and now the, the population of San Diego overwhelmingly support hot lanes. Hot lanes are a reality. As with most new technologies, there are always surprises. Issues you never expected crop up. What have these pioneers learned about tolling and marketing challenges that come with hot lanes implementation? When agencies implement pricing, they should be looking for strong goals and objectives that are easily discussed and presented to the public. There should also be a strong public outreach program, not only through implementation and development, but also a post-implementation during the operation of the facility itself. We're looking at interoperability of toll collection technologies, electronic toll collection technologies, is a way to reduce the administrative and overhead costs of the pricing program. So they should be looking at what others are doing in the region and providing um, the interoperability of these tool collection. After we've opened, the biggest issue we have is striping. In Washington State, we have basically access continuous in and out of our HOV lanes. We've gone to a place where we have two-foot buffers with access zones, and it's been the striping that the drivers have had the biggest challenge with. It hasn't been the technology, it hasn't been the toll price, it hasn't been the signing, it hasn't been the enforcement. It's being able to say, I used to be able to get in and out of this HOV lane anywhere I wanted to. Now you're telling me I can only get in and out at different locations. It's interesting because you go to Southern California and that's the predominance of their operating system down there. So it's new to Washington State and it's new to our drivers. What has happened is as the infrastructure has evolved, as the technology has evolved, we are actually at a nexus where we can begin to do these sorts of congestion pricing uh, strategies in an effective and efficient manner. Proper signage and lane markings are critical. Also, a public awareness campaign to make sure motorists understand hot lanes and how they work. If there was anything that I could change in retrospect would be early identification of what we're going to refer to the lanes as and, and defining that nomenclature up front so that people had an expectation of what was forthcoming. Even today, we, we struggle with whether we call it a managed lane, a tollway, a hot lane, are all those things the same? That's confusing to the general public and we as uh, transportation professionals and practitioners kind of get married to uh, our nomenclature, which oftentimes confuses the general public. So get all of that clear up front so that um, once you start rolling it out, you have one consistent message from beginning to end that doesn't change as the tides change. We'd like to emphasize the uh, importance of a public outreach program that not only engages the citizens and users of the facility in what their expectations and outcomes of the scheme would be, but also provide them information on the performance post-implementation and what they're actually getting for the price that they're paying. A clear single message is vital. Make sure that everyone on the team calls the lanes by the same name. Make sure the public knows what a hot lane is. 
One of the areas that we probably could have changed and looked at has been our marketing and our branding. Um, we've talked a lot about express toll lanes, there's been talk about the hot lanes, different terms have been used, managed lanes have been used. We couldn't come to a place of coming to a marketing and a branding that everyone inside the department, everybody inside the region could agree to. So what happened, we opened up the 167 hot lanes just because that was the definition, the discussion, all the conversations was an HOV lane to a hot lane. So now in Washington State, we have hot lanes. As we look to the future, we're exploring the idea of having two express toll lanes. Well, are they the same as a hot lane? Or are they different? We like to market them as express toll lanes, and the public gets the idea this is an express trip. It's being tolled, so I'm paying something for that express trip. Everyone agrees that a consistent message is vital for public understanding and acceptance. In most every location, once a monetary value was associated with a trip in the hot lane, there was an increased expectation that violators would not be tolerated. Did this change the way hot lanes were enforced in Seattle? Our HOV enforcement uh, actually did not change dramatically with the hot lanes being put in place. We have three tickets that the state patrol officer can issue. One is just for HOV violation, one would be for violating the traffic control signs and the striping, and those double stripes that we put down, which was new to Washington State, as well as then the toll evasion. It's all enforced by an officer on the side of the road with a confirmation light that comes from the transponder readers. We found also that the state patrol officers actually issue mainly HOV violations. Um, that way that's more secure, it's easier to identify that you were driving without someone else in your vehicle and if you didn't have a transponder, it was easy to then issue that, that ticket. Enforcement has not been a big issue in California either. For San Diego, there's not a difference in enforcement in operating it as an HOV facility versus an HOT facility. And this is because we don't have a dedicated lane for um, HOT users to use to identify that they're paying a toll. So our operating policy is if you're a single occupant driver, we expect you to put your transponder in your window so the system can recognize you. Our enforcement strategy still relies heavily on our partnership with the California Highway Patrol and they do a simple visual inspection. If they see someone driving as a solo occupant and they don't have a transponder, they are cited as an HOV violator. Hot lanes are viable if the public knows what is expected of them. Be consistent in describing the lanes to the public. Make your signage messages clear. Make sure lane markings are understandable. Enforce proper hot lane use. Experience so far indicates that the public likes hot lanes if they know what the benefits are. There is a way for employees to reliably get to and from work. Kids can be picked up on time, even with crosstown traffic. Hot lanes are a proven time saver. The Federal Highway Administration has a, a many program uh, opportunities and program guidance on their website or through contact with the agency itself. Um, also, we can direct you towards uh, agencies in, in states that are currently have pricing programs and be able to partner with them to um, develop and uh, put together a pricing scheme that, that works best for them. Hot lanes may be a tool to help address traffic congestion issues in your area. For more information about implementing hot lanes, visit either of the following websites, the Federal Highway Administration Office of Operations or the Federal Highway Administration Tolling and Pricing Program.